do you want to get stronger okay. and do you want to feel the strength? Do you want to start to see those results happen? I think the, yes. the answer is yes. Okay. You're doing too much resistance training. So you're, you're doing two yoga classes a week. You're teaching a lot, which you're not doing the full class, but you're still moving. You're doing a lot of walking. There's a stress of studying and uh, for what you're studying for. Five days a week of strength training on top of the yoga is a lot. I would say do three full body workouts a week. Yeah, literally. anabolic. Mm -hmm. go, MAPS anabolic. Go, yeah, MAPS anabolic uh, would be perfect. Do the three foundational workouts a week option on there because there's a two versus a three one. Three foundational workouts a week plus the two yoga and you'll see strength gains come on, especially phase one. You'll see them come on real fast. Especially if, if you stay consistent with the trigger sessions too. Yeah, it, you'll see them come on real fast, Amy. You're just doing a lot. You're doing a lot uh, of, of exercise, training, and activity. It's probably why <laughs> you're plateauing. Maybe all you have to do is actually kind of uh, scale back a little bit uh, on the volume and focus on like a full body routine, and I think your body's going to respond. Yeah. All right, today's giveaway, MAPS Anabolic, the foundational MAPS workout program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on your notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you. You get free access to MAPS Anabolic. Also, we're running a sale right now, um, and I think there's only two days left, right? 48 hours, if I'm not mistaken. As of the dropping of this episode, we are going to be ending the MAPS Power Bundle, which is MAPS Power Lift combined with MAPS Strong. Retails at $300, but the sale is $79.99, and you get both. So if you're interested in that, Go to mapsmarch.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. The most valuable piece of equipment in the gym by far is the cable machine. Ooh. Prove me wrong. Cable machine. Prove me wrong. Our buddy Pekulski's going to like you saying that. Yeah. You know He's what? A big, big cable guy. To hey, I'll tell you what right now. Okay, I know we talk about free weights versus machines. We brought that up before. Yeah. But there's one machine that good trainers free motion. will use all the time. And it's free motion might be one of them. It might be just a multi-directional cable machine. I had one called a Da Vinci when I, yeah. when I had my studio. It's very versatile. That's for sure. It's very versatile. And the reason why I like cable machines so much where you just have a pulley, right? With a cable is be and here's the downside of machines with machines. You have to follow the, the human body follows the machine's path, follows the machine's range of motion, follows the, the technique and form of the machine. But with cables, it's not the case. Cables are more like free weights than they are machines. In fact, cables, I would say, are free weights, if I were to label them, because the cable follows your body. So whether you're short, tall- Well, they're not on a track. Motion. Exactly. Yeah, they're not on a track. So yeah. I agree. It's more like uh, free weights. But And the one thing that makes them better, I don't think they are better, but one of the things that make them, make them better than free weights is the uh, time under tension. Yeah. I mean, with cables. That's true. There's no strength like arc, right? Yeah. There's no. The, the, it's, it's the same weight the whole time. The entire time through, uh, which you got to think of that with uh, free weights. There's moments when in the movement, when, you know, very little, uh, you're not having to hold or resist a lot of the weight. It's being mm -hmm. rested on. Yeah. Okay. So let's, go into, let's get into that a little bit deeper because someone might be confused, right? So we'll use a basic exercise like a curl. Let's say I'm curling a 50 pound dumbbell. Well, at the bottom, when I go from the bottom to this position here, I'm actually curling less than 50 pounds. It becomes fully 50 here when I'm directly opposing gravity. Yeah. From here to here, it's also less than 50 pounds. With a cable, the weight is constant regardless That's because right. the gravity is affecting the weight stack, which is just going straight up and down. The cable, I can move in any direction. So you yeah. get that constant tension. Yeah, and, the and drawback is uh, leg exercises. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I don't I think you say. should replace weights with, with cables. Well, that was my biggest critique to Tonal. After yeah. we did the interview with the CEO and then we have a machine, we actually have a Tonal machine in our gym and you, you can't do heavy stuff. With you've it. never seen any video. Well, yeah, legs just sucks. Yeah. I mean, all upper, upper body stuff was cool. Yeah. I got, in fact, there was days when I was doing kind of an upper lower split and I was actually using it for a while. Um, but man, it only a, a couple times of training legs on it and I quickly abandoned mm -hmm. it. I was like, that was terrible. What ended up happening was uh, my shoulders and forearms and stuff got more sore than my legs did because mm. you have to hold. Yep. So you have to hold. So I'd, I'd max load it. So I actually was putting some decent weight for my legs, but that was so hard to hang on yep. to that what ended up getting the most yeah, work. The was only in. thing I've seen that has decent uh, leg activity is if you could get up like on a platform and then you could run it underneath and have a belt. So you do like a belt 
oh, yeah. loaded squat there you go. Uh, with with the cable, so it's pulling you down and and it's it's driving the hips down with you. But which is a very sophisticated it's machine. It's a lot very, you're going to add. <laughs> yeah. It's a whole new machine at that yeah. point. So yeah, yeah. what are we talking? Yeah, about? Yeah, but I mean, there's there are what I would consider fundamental exercises that you can't necessarily do very well with free weights that you would need cables or a secondary option would be bands. For example, rotational exercises with, with rotational resistance. There's some stuff you can do with free weights that, you know, will give you some of that, but that direct, you know, opposing resistance, uh, you know, when I'm rotating, cables are perfect for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, exercises where you're pushing down, right? You can't really do that with free weights because gravity is yeah. d doesn't work that way, right? But you could do that with cable exercises. Um, and then what you said, Adam, the constant tension. Well, I love... I love that you can push pull and it's, it's a natural, I love that. yeah. Like, um, because the body naturally rotates anyways, and it's something that uh, you don't, you, you can't really pull that off with any other type of machine or free weights mm -hmm. very effectively. Um, so I, I, I tended to, and I would train with my clients a lot of times just to get them to learn control and be able to operate, uh, and, and move and push and pull and also stabilize their hips so they don't rotate. Yes, and, and there's also this uh, belief that you can't do explosive movements on cables. Now, bands you can. Everybody knows that. You can do lots of great explosive movements with bands. But people are like, you can't do that with cables because the weight stack flops all over the place. Well, I figured out a way around this. What I used to do with the weight stack is I would attach bands to the weight stack, so the top of the weight stack down to the bottom, that way, when I did a quick rotation, the weight stack wouldn't flop and create slack in the cable. The the bands actually kept everything taut, and I was able to do really good explosive movements with the cable. So just overall, it's a great piece Well, of they stuff. also yeah. al allow you to um, do very unique angles, right? So, and, and totally. It, if you were, obviously, if, if, if a bulk of your training is centered around the, the core lifts that we always talk about, then this is a this is a fun area to explore, which is doing these really unique, you know, elbow position, tricep kickbacks or extensions, and that you just can't do with free weights. Mm -hmm. And there's no machines that are built that way. And you know, there I would never recommend that to somebody who wasn't doing the core lifts to be messing with, you know, flared out elbow, you know, tricep extensions and and doing some weird position. But there is value in that because it, it will it will be novel. It'd be different. Mm -hmm. your, your body's not used to, to training in that plane of motion for that muscle or whatever. And so I do find value in that for the experienced lifter to to manipulate that and cables provide that stimulus that you can't get from a machine or from totally. free weights. Look, 95% of my workouts over the last 15 years, and the other 5%, by the way, is uh, when I would visit gyms or go on uh, travel and stuff, but 95% of my workouts, I used no machines except for cable. It would be cable, barbells, dumbbells, and that's it. And that's how I've worked out for the last 15 years. And not only have I not missed anything, I've gotten phenomenal results. But I, but cables have always been a piece of it. When I had my studio, we didn't have any machines except for what I said, the Da Vinci machine, which had like all these pulleys on either side. So you had all these different directions. It was kind of like a, a free motion, but it was a little bit more complex and kind of bigger setup. And even here in the studio, um, that's it. That's what I use. And that's all I ever train people on. And we got phenomenal results <coughs> that way. Now, I know that free weights and at-home training is supposed to make you racist. Is that the same thing with <laughs> cables? Do is that Does cables Don't make do you it, more bro. or less hey, tell racist? Me, Where are you tell, reading this? Tell, <laughs> oh, tell me you saw the article. Dude, I tell, did. Unfortunately, Okay, okay I did. tell me I didn't call this. <laughs> tell me I did not call this. Okay, so here's, uh, here's what happened, a little timeline. And I saw this happening little by little. So first it started with the you know, um, uh, healthy at every size movement, which started with good intentions, but really started to get distorted. We talked about this on the show and I saw a little bit of this and that. And I was like, Oh, wait a minute. They're calling fitness oppressive. They're calling building muscle toxic. And I'm like, this sounds like political, uh, you know, political speak. So what's going on here? Then the pandemic happened and gyms were the, the, the first and last, they were the first place to shut down the last places to open. Okay. Um, so they shut down gyms. They obviously were told a lot of things, what we need to do for our health and this and that. And the most, the loudest voices that questioned the narrative came from the fitness space, which made sense. We did a whole episode on this and it made sense to me because health and fitness people take our own health into our own hands. We're, we're very responsible with it. 
So we're the last people to just take advice and just do something. We'll always question. It doesn't mean we're going to make a bad decision, but we're not going to, if a doctor tells me, take this, this, and this, I'm a health and fitness person. I'm going to go do research and kind of like question it a little bit before I just blindly, you know, uh, follow or whatever. So that started happening and you saw a lot of fitness people pushing back. And I said, uh oh, we're going to be targeted. And then it, studies came out showing that mm -hmm. people who are fit and strong are less likely to support certain government actions and whatever. And I'm like, this is going to happen 100%. They're going to attack uh, the fitness and health space. They want you weak and dependent. They, it, is what, it is happening. So this article talks about how far, and by the way, far right, extremist, Nazi, those are great terms that they use uh, for anything they don't like. So yeah. you, don't, you don't have to be that. You just throw yeah. it at you. If they don't like you, why can't they be Antifa? Yeah, well, because I don't know. Have you seen the pictures of some of these Antifa guys? I don't think they look. <laughs> I'm just like. saying, like you know, they're out there. No, but what they what they this article talks about how far right extremist groups are going into these online fitness communities and plucking people uh, as part of their you know basically it's like breeding grounds right for this, which I mean is this happening online and the you know billions of people I'm sure it is. Uh, I would bet you my house that uh, that breeding grounds for people to be manipulated into some scary ideology is greater in forums with people who have no direction, who feel listless with no meaning, yeah. depressed, depressed, anxious, not fitness community people. So I would argue the opposite and say it's a harder place to get people to to turn them into this kind of you know evil ideology. Nonetheless, they're saying. Oh, that's what's happening. Then there's articles that I'll, I should pull up some of these uh, some of these articles that uh, these. I feel like titles. people are getting paid to just write outlandish titles. For well, that anytime articles. he sends now anything to me, I ask him that right away. Yeah, it's like okay, is this like one person tweeting it, and is, is it? Or are they just trying to get attention? It reminds me of like these two academics who were writing papers to get published. They were fake. About dogs like showing a uh, toxic masculinity by like uh yeah. you know raping other dogs at the dog park or something <laughs> it was like so absurd and it got approved uh, and yeah. was published peer reviewed they they made it up that's a true story it's just yeah, like it's that. we're just living in such an absurd um time where some of these things make it to publication and you're just like well, here Why? Let, me, let me read you two other titles of articles okay here's one do you boast about your fitness Watch out, you'll unavoidably become right wing. And it says, I'm not sure what exercise does for your body, but I do know what it does to your personality, and it's not pretty. Okay. Here's another How one. How do people that are left wing feel about, you know, they're trying to just improve their fitness or like, oh no. Here, oh no, I can't. Here's another one. I don't want to be the, the dark side associated. The dark side of wellness, the overlap between spiritual thinking and far right conspiracies. This is so. I just wish that I me. wish that I was still in gyms right now, so I could experience like the the member <laughs> who comes up says, "Yeah, I'd like to cancel this membership." Oh, what's wrong, sir? Is it not working out for you anymore? Yeah, yeah. no, I'm I'm concerned. I'm yeah. going to become a racist if yeah. I continue. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like so conservative. I just did a bunch of curls, and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm going to like get a truck now. Yeah. Yeah. For some I, reason, yeah. I really like yeah. Trump. All of a sudden, I don't know what's going on. Like, <laughs> no, I'm dude. concerned. I need to leave. Here, no, here's here's dude. here's the deal. Can dude. we shut? Uh, here's the deal. Yeah. This is this is my opinion. Okay, I'm going to give you my opinion, but I believe it to be true. If you are fit and healthy, or at least if you take those into your own hands and you prioritize them, it's a feeling of empowerment. Talk to anybody who's ever made fitness and health a priority, anybody who's ever gone down that road, and they'll tell you it's very empowering. Now, you don't have to be ripped. You don't have to have super high performance or do anything like that. You just be an average person that just does these things for themselves. It's a, it's a self-personal growth vehicle it makes you feel empowered. Mm -hmm. You are less likely to be manipulated. You are less likely to be controlled because you feel more empowered. When you feel weak, when you feel sick, when you feel confused, when you feel like you don't have any power over your life, you are prime for the plucking. You are a prime person for a political agenda to pick you and to manipulate you and you, to scare you, just look useful anywhere people gather anymore. It's ridiculous. I feel like <laughs> so stupid. Churches, like grocery store, like anywhere yeah. people actually like interact yeah, with they, each other. I've, it's I've, like I've, let's create some kind of crazy ass idea to divide people. I've heard them say building muscle is toxic masculinity. I've heard uh, just the craziest shit ever. And anybody who could look at, look at the studies on inmates. These are male inmates, men who committed terrible crimes. 
Look at the benefits they get psychologically from lifting weights. This is a huge mistake. California eliminated, got rid of gyms out of prisons because they don't want inmates to get big and strong. Terrible. You had more depression, more substance abuse, more problems. Um, yeah. This is a fact. So this is it. By the way, they are barking up the wrong tree. The last place on earth that's going to fall to this is the fitness space. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> you could try all you want. But the people in the fitness space, we ex experience this ourselves, and most of us entered into it through insecurities and our own challenges and troubles, and it, it helped us along the way. So good fucking luck. So I, what I said in my post was, you can kiss my muscular glutes, all these people who want to <laughs> do this. I know, glutes. you got me to go off, dude. <laughs> 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 well, yeah, since you're going off on that, the, net, the other article, I don't know if you saw it, I shared it in the group thread, I don't know if you had time to read it or not, but... Was it just a couple of days ago? Uh, FDA approved um, GM oh, GMO cows. Yeah, oh, that's cool. What? <laughs> that's so cool. So now we have we have pigs, cows, and then there's I think there's salmon was one of them. The yes. Way. So yeah. with the cows, what they did is they modified them so that they have this this coat that protects them during the winter better. Uh, so in so in their embryo, they're basically CRISPR technology. CRISPR yeah, Gene and then they'll editing. breed them uh -huh, to have wow. these thicker coats. Wow. I, um, I'm i not worried about the food, the meat from the cows. I think it's probably fine. It's not going to do anything. But as soon as you GMO something, well, yeah, it's patented now. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah, it is now that, a patented product. Isn't it also interesting, though, because uh, wasn't there some genetic traits that if you alter it, it's like you have a byproduct of that that's like unforeseen right away? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes. I mean, they're pretty well tested and all that stuff. I'm not going to go down necessarily that route. I mean, I mean I'm not talking trash because, I mean, it, I was definitely enlightened when we had uh, is it Zach uh, yes. on from yeah, Z-Biotics, and he was kind of breaking that down. I'm, I, 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 I'm less worried about the... Like, um, like, is it is the it chemicals and the, like? Yeah. It's more that you're giving this control to patent, like you're yeah. saying. You know, so if if you open that door for them the cows to be patent now, yep. Like, what's so whoever figures out this way to Just modify like them Sato, to have the richest, uh, best seeds. meat yep. can patent, and then now they own the rights of that cow. That yep. I mean, yep. Now, and 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 that's look. And the issue with that, with the whole patenting, if you look I mean, at the like, way, imagine if filet mignons was owned by a company. Yeah, like you could only get a filet mignon from this company because they have the, the filet mignon. The, I think they say. Is that <laughs> exactly. no? No, it's, it's not. not it's <laughs> I said it wrong. <laughs> I actually got you to think about this. <laughs> I, <did. laughs> like, really? I never know. I look over at Doug's face. And Doug, it. Yeah, yeah. Doug's always He's got all, it. It is spelled that way. Maybe yeah. it's Follett McDonald. Yeah. No, it, uh, I don't like the whole- Follett. I don't yeah. like that. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't care. Do this so long as they don't pull the, the switcheroo that they did with GMOs with plants. What they did with plants was they created GMO plants, which by the way, GMO plants themselves, nothing wrong with them. The shit that they spray all over them, that's probably the issue. That's what they found, yeah. Nonetheless- they stop, they don't label them. So if you buy corn and it's GMO or corn that's not GMO, you don't know. Mm -hmm. So if they sell the beef and it says on their GMO beef and the consumer's informed, I'm fine. If they pull the trick on us where you don't know where your beef is coming from, is it GMO? Is it non GMO? What's the deal? That's when I'll have a bit of an issue and let the consumers decide you know, I, what the deal I is. I am so not super conspiratorial, but why is Bill Gates like buying all the farms up? I've read about that. Is that real? Why is that true? I heard. Why that is too. he getting in the vaccine business, and then why now is he meddling with our food? Well, what's the prevailing the prevailing theory right now? Why? why? That has, I'm, go there's go hard, be, Justin. Yeah, don't, there's got to hey, be don't some. Don't shrug your shoulders. There's got to be some tinfoil <laughs> no. hat ideas. Well, you know, like like you're mentioning, right? Um, being able to patent food. Even uh, Rob Wolf we uh, had on was yeah. talking about. Um, how corporations are starting to think in that direction of really cornering the market. And uh, I would assume that um, this would, and his objective is to get people to eat, uh, you know, plant-based type meats and like, or be able to create cruelty-free meats or whatever. And so it's like, are you just trying to, uh, acquire all the farms so that way we don't have that as an option anymore and oh, like lower the you know i don't know dude like again I'm, this is all speculative but i'm like why bill gates like go back to like making computer chips yeah yeah that's all i'm saying yeah get back to putting computer, I computer I freaked, chips in i vaccine. freaked out over the weekend because i had a uh <laughs> I had a fake chicken nugget. I didn't even know. I was so fucking. What do you mean? Yeah. What do you mean fake? I was at my my mother in law's house, and uh, before dinner, she had brought it. Like she she knows her you know son in law gets hungry all the time, and like she like I, waiting two hours to eat is like, too much for me. So she always has like little snacks or chips or dips things for me to snack <laughs> on. And she had this little dish of like meats. I'm like awesome, and I'm like eating them down. And I'm like, this is really good. Where is this? She goes, that's not even chicken. Oh, 
you I go, got what? church, bro. Yeah, I go, what? Oh, she goes, snap. She, yeah. She goes, no, it's vegan. I'm like, oh, I'm fucking so, <laughs> I'm so mad. Dude. I'm so mad. <laughs> you got chilled Never out again. Oh, I did. It was actually pretty good, dude. I was really surprised. Yeah. It actually tasted. They well. engineer the shit. Out they of them, do. I, that's why. Far, it was, yeah. Bro, I thought I was eating chicken. I really did. I had no idea it wasn't. I mean, it looked like it. The texture was like it. It tasted like it. Well, you remember I the mean, Matrix? They said so that was the problem. Everything tasted like chicken. Yeah. <laughs> but does it? It was the easiest to engineer. And I wonder if that's true, like because I haven't had a lot of uh, you know fake meats before. I think that actually, actually might have been my first experience of having fake meat. Um, and is that what it is? Is it that chicken is the easiest? And does that does oh, I have no idea? Yeah, I don't. Have know. Have you guys? Know. Have you Doug? Have you had any fake meat? I've had the beef. And Would you think? I didn't like it personally. It didn't taste like real beef to me. Now, did you go in with an open mind, or did you go yeah. and bias already? Was I was kind of biased, yeah, but so I did. But I did shut that off for a moment while I ate it and said, "Okay, does this really taste?" Now, was like it beef palatable? Meat? I mean, it was palatable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I so I went to somebody's house. Same thing happened to me. Yeah, I had no ideas, and they go, "Oh, we have items was uh, impossible." Or yeah, impossible one of the burgers. one of the two or yeah. three that are out there. I go, "Oh, great." But you know, I'd be polite. I'm going to try it. it. Probably won't kill me. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I ate it. But I, I did not say, "Oh, this tastes like beef" to me. Yeah, yeah. I went in completely unbiased because I had no idea. And so yeah. you know, I was, I was fooled. I really was. They're going. So. We're, we're not that far in our lifetime. I'll have to try it. In our lifetime, there's going to be companies that are going to sell meat that they grow in a lab. It's not going to be. Well, animal. that's what made. So that why I brought it up is I mean, that we're, we're going beef. this way in the GMO yeah, yeah. conversation, and that I mean, it's only a matter of time before you're right. And the fact that it fooled someone like me just makes me realize, like, oh wow, this is definitely going to happen. Dude. You know, so <laughs> I was so annoyed, but it does. Just, meat, just meat in a box. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they can it was like a little kid. Shape. I was like spitting it out, like just meat in a box. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like when you trick your kid into eating something yeah, healthy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know, I put spinach in those pancakes. Wow. Well, 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 yeah, I don't, I don't it like out. it now, yeah, Dad. Yeah. Yeah. Wrong. Hey, speaking of processed stuff, so you guys want to know what I drank this morning? I've, I've never had one of these before, but what, I had a, I had a bang. Bang and energy. energy. <laughs> <laughs> I did, bro. So I went to the gas station. Oh, I was just like, where did you even Out get of that? all of us? Like, yeah, you're totally the bang so guy. So it's because <laughs> you're the total right? bang guy. Hey, you look like a bang guy. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. no, I don't, bro. I don't have, I don't <laughs> have bang shades. Big bang, bang guy. <laughs> 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 Bang. No, so I went. I went to the to the to the gas station, got gas, went inside, and I saw I needed something to pre workout, and I left my my pulse here. So I usually will do Legion Pulse pre workout if I do a pre workout, but it was I was by my house, and I wanted it. I had a time. I had a time frame. Like, well, it's got to kick in, kind of somewhat when I get there. By the time I get there, it'll be too late to take a pre workout. So I'm like, I'll just go in the gas station and see what they have. Yeah. And I saw Bang and Rockstar and all that stuff. And Bang had the most caffeine. It was it's like got three. a lot of caffeine. Was it like 700? No, no. it was 300. <laughs> Jesus no, Christ. Kill you. 300 is high. Anything over 200 that is one's high. Called boom. I was just throwing it. <laughs> boom, yeah. <laughs> You're done. So, so I saw <laughs> like hey, the flavors. <laughs> hey, the flavors are fucking hilarious, right? Oh, so yeah. it's like it's like uh, unicorn sparkle or some shit like that. <laughs> so I got it, And right? that's the one you picked. That's the one I got. Like, Forget getting like, the basic fruit punch or like green apple. It's like, I I want the unicorn crystals. Hell yeah, bro. Oh, you ever see shit. their setup at fitness uh, conventions? Awesome. Oh, there's like <laughs> platforms, a stripper pole. You, you got fly girls, dude. Bro, it's, it is. I mean, it's, it's everything wrong with the fitness industry it. wrapped into one company. Yeah. Throwing it out, yeah. isn't it? No, they double trouble. Well, doesn't the, the CEO guy look yeah. kind of, he's kind of yeah, a wild, like a wild He looks Corvette, like, like, like. Pull him you, up, Doug. Let me see what he looks if like. You, he looks if like you, he has hair plugs. Yeah, if you had to, if you had to, like, if you had to, like, Think what would the Bang CEO look like? Yeah. That's what he looks like. Yeah, like the guy's he's actually like hairy what, so chest what's his, all exposed. Uh, what's his history? Do you know what he did before? Oh, like, what, I have no idea. You guys don't know? Uh uh-uh. uh Because uh-uh. I know he's quite the character, right? He 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 looks pretty wild. Like, he looks wild. He looks like, he looks like, like the guy that would say, like, first like we're gonna double triple down like on the half medallion. naked chicks and tube tops. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then we'll figure out the formulation. Yeah, yeah. what's his name, Doug? It's Jack Owak. Okay, Jack. Do a little homework, Doug, on what he did before. Like, how did he get? How did he get to that position? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I made an energy drink to bang. Yeah. <laughs> hey, welcome to I the party. Bang more. That bowl got cocaine. We got ketamine yeah. over here. Yeah. Come on in. No, I. So I had. But here's what I was gonna say. So like I, I think adult films or something. I think that's the film. The the flavor that I had. What's that flavor there in the middle, Doug? Marshmallow. I, I'm. Oh. So I'm not gonna lie. The candy-like flavorish stuff that does attract me. You know what I mean? Because I am a child with that kind of stuff. I'm not gonna lie. 
So anyway, here's what I was gonna say. You're the kid that totally got. You're the kid that got totally got in the minivan. You know what I'm saying? What? <laughs> you're the kid who totally came in the mini minivan. M&Ms for the, oh, the free candy van. Yeah, no, candy. I didn't. Bro. I didn't fall for that shit. <laughs> I had to trick. Not again. It's but any- unicorn marshmallow <laughs> pig. <laughs> you're not gonna get me three times in the same week. No, sirree. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Twice. Is, that's yeah. where I draw the line. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Shame on the me. lollipop is not that good. All right. Anyway, so listen. Yeah. So what I was gonna say is this: is I had it worked out, and I tell you what, uh, the 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 other ingredients and in pre workouts do make a difference because I had the same amount of caffeine. Yeah. 300 milligrams, and now it says in it that it has certain things in there, but I mean, it's a can of bang. I'm sure it's whatever. It wasn't the same as Pulse. I was definitely just, wasn't the same. Okay, I was going to ask you that because um, I've actually done that intentionally. I've like gone back and forth and yeah. used like energy drinks as a pre workout. And although I do like energy drinks, I, I I drink them quite frequently. I mean, it's definitely better than nothing. Yeah, and I yeah. and I, I like them more like a, like a, like how I would have a cup of coffee. If, but if it's not like in the morning, it's in yeah. the afternoon. I have one, so that's something that I might do. Um, but I do notice they they're not the same as if I want to be amped for a workout. I pre workout to me is I get better totally different. I get better pump with with pulse. I get better connectivity. It feels different. It feels more like a pre workout versus like just caffeine. Mm. So that was the thing I was going to say is is I noticed a difference. Even though caffeine mm-hmm. was the same, pulse obviously has the beta alanine, the betaine, the betaine, the, the citrulline. The other compounds in there that help with performance. I was, so I could tell. I could tell the difference. Yeah, I was just talking to one of the kids at uh, the workouts this morning, and he was he was talking about pre-workouts, but like something else, like the supplement that he was on, I hadn't heard of it. It was like not NAC, but it was something like that, like some kind of like uh, NA something. Mm. I didn't know if NAD? Like, Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. You're looking at me and just throwing yeah, shit. Yeah, because you know this <laughs> random, like random, random you know, CBS, you know, some of that stuff. It's like ephedra, but it's like, <laughs> or ephedrine, but um, yeah, ephedra. But yeah, it's, I don't know exactly what that supplement was. I, I thought know. it was a new product that came out. I'm like, Sal probably knows exactly what this I is. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm like, let- stop doing this because, you know, they, they may be testing. Uh, this may show well, up. Well, dude, there was a while there where I don't remember what pre-workout was out there, but they were they had a compound in there that was a precursor to meth. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah. I can't. Uh, what's it called? One three something something. Maybe Doug could look it up. The, the company got in trouble for it, and everybody's pissed off. And you could buy bottles of the stuff on eBay. I think people bought it and stored it. So it's like it's like a legal pre workout trade, oh, you know, or whatever that's going on. Yeah. Wow. Uh, but apparently, you know, uh, we'll it, look it up. Yeah, it was a good time. I mean, back in the day, what is it, Doug? Craze. Oh, that was what. What was in the? What was the ingredient in there that got banned? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, it meth-like some... substance. It's called. Meth-like. I don't know what it is. Now I'm not going to lie to you. Twenty-year-old me, if I heard it. you say that, of course. If I heard you say meth-like substance, I'd be like, Why I'm do you think they marketed it. all the the, the pro hormones like steroids? Ugh. I mean, that's what it. Would... And they were steroids. Yeah, those yeah. assholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this works great. No, but um, but yeah, I know it got banned for that because uh, of its some of the side effects people were getting. But anyway, when we were when we were younger, I mean, I, I'm not gonna, I can't speak too much. I was I was a Fedra all the time. I would yeah. throw that on everything. Lots, oh, yeah. lots of people were and had a, yeah had a really good time. Can with you even get a hold of a Fedra on anything anymore? Is you it, can. You so can. You, yeah. So Sudafed. Sudafed is chemical Fedra. Uh, uh, so you can't even buy. They two, lock it up. Yeah, now. you can't even buy two boxes of Sudafed yeah. without getting fricks. Like, I know. I feel like a jerk. Like, <laughs> it used to be in uh, many things. Uh, you could get it like truck stops. Yep. And it was like some of the guys before football games would take it and just almost be like foaming at the mouth. But just ah. the the dose of Fedra and Sudafed is very minimal. Like the no, old so speed stacks would be twenty five milligrams. Twenty five milligrams of Fedra alkaloids, which if you took. A dose, a decent dose of Sudafed, that's what you're, you're going to get something close to that. No, no way. You think that there's 25 milligrams of ephedra Doug, maybe, in, a, in one pill of Sudafed? Doug, maybe look up Sudafed. Maybe you're right. It's Sudafedrin, so it's the same It's the same thing. It's just one's a chemical form. Ephedra was a herbal form. Okay. So let's look up the dose of Sudafedrin in a the reason regular why, dose of, of Sudafed. The reason why I can't imagine that is- Maybe I'm thinking I mean, of I extended was, one. I right? was just sick not that long ago, and Sudafed is kind of like the go-to, uh, you know, uh, whatchamacallit. Um, Drug. And, yeah. And I, I would think that if I took 25 milligrams of ephedra, I would be up. Yeah. Like it would keep me wide awake. It didn't stimulate me like that. I'm, maybe I'm thinking of the 24-hour time-released one because you could buy Sudafed that's 24 hours, and then I think it does have yeah, that. The one, I had, the one I had is either the 12 or the 24. I don't remember which one it is. What does it say there, Doug? I don't think it's 25 milligrams, Sal. 
Yeah, I'm trying to get this. So pseudoephedrine is spelled with a P-S, I'm seeing. <laughs> yeah, just look up pseudoephed. You just type in pseudoephed, look at the back of the ingredients, it'll, it'll, it'll oh, tell okay. you. Okay, yeah, let me do that then. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, so um, it, it's the same chemical. It's just not herbal form. But maybe it's the time-release one. Because if you take the time-release one, you're not getting hit with all 25 milligrams at once. It, like, releases it slowly throughout You know, the I day. always thought it was interesting that, like, that they'd make you, you know— you can only buy one box and you get carded now because if people would take the Sudafed, they crush it up and then they basically they turn it into meth. Yeah, they basically yeah. turn it into meth. I would think that's a really expensive way to make meth. Like Sudafed is not cheap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so but how, the resale like, at the margins on meth are probably amazing. Uh, done that way? Uh, I mean, how else? Obviously. Well, I mean, you like one little box of Sudafed. Is, and, <laughs> Stop and, trying to do the math, Adam. I, well, <laughs> it, it just, Adam's like doing the, he's like a business guy. What are right? the other Wait ingredients like in this big vat that we're creating crystals with, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't, that's why I don't know how much, uh, like, I don't know how much is a box of Sudafed. Maybe Google that next time. How much is a box of, how much Stop. meth, how much meth is a box of Sudafed? Well, dude, make? isn't it like they, I remember seeing some picture where it showed all the different ingredients that like went into like making meth. It was like all these like horrifically toxic chemicals chemicals like yeah. you know from like paint thinner to like all these different uh household items that you can make it with it's so disgusting. the active ingredient is phenylephrine hcl 10 milligrams in the pseudofed according to the label uh there's got to be another form of pseudofed because i know it's pseudoephedrine is what's in there. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But I, I, So I'm I've here. looked, and that's why, I mean, I didn't think Doug was going to find it because I've I've always been curious about mm -hmm. that. Like, okay, if, if that's got ephedra in it, uh, at what dose per pill? And I've never been able to get to the bottom of it to find out how much is in there. And I don't think it's 25 milligrams, Sal, because the way you, I mean, I know how I fell off of 25 milligrams of ephedra. I mean, it's like taking six cups of coffee. So it doesn't feel it's like... It's definitely a good time. Yeah. I, you, okay, here we go. I found it, Doug, in two seconds. So... <laughs> This guy, man, I swear to God. 24 tablets, 30 milligrams each. So it's a... Each? 30 milligrams of pseudoephedrine. Yeah. Now, I don't know. Let me see if this is a... If you take this one every four hours or if you take it... Well, even if it was a... Yeah, every four to six hours. Yep. There you go. So there's 30 milligrams of ephedra in a single... Of pseudoephedrine in a pseudoephed, yeah. Pseudoephed congestion. That's the one. Okay. So now, I wonder if you were, if if I were to take two of them and crush them up and then wow. and then take it and then take it, would I get like a crazy? That's a sixty milligrams of ephedra. You know, if you took <clears throat> if you just took the regular one, I think you'd be you'd be you'd be fine, dude. Yeah, you uh, could buy you can even buy a um uh, like a generic version. Now this and what I'm seeing is a twenty four hour one has two hundred and forty milligrams. Yeah, spread out. Pseudoephedrine HCL. Now now yeah, here's the deal. I'm not a hundred percent clear if it's a one to one ratio. In other words, if ephedra al be. alkaloids and pseudoephedra. It can't be so a hundred and something of because if someone did chew that or crush that up and took a hundred and twenty, would you say Doug? hundred and what? hundred and twenty, I believe. Hundred and twenty milligrams of actual ephedra in one oh, hit. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Hold on. That's two hundred and forty milligrams. Actually. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I guarantee you back in the day, you never took ephedra by itself. It always came with caffeine and other things. Two hundred milligrams of caffeine. Here was the dose. It was no, two hundred megs of caffeine. I've done, I've done the little white pills of just pure ephedra. And you didn't and, throw caffeine and, on top and of it? And the most I've ever ran is like fifty milligrams. Fifty milligrams of that stuff, and I was like zipping. Oh, okay. Well, so there's... That's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, like so the difference between ephedrine episode. and pseudoephedrine. You know. here, I, just, <laughs> I just found an article. The main the difference between ephedrine and pseudoephedrine is that ephedrine is a sympa, sympathomimetic alkaloid derived from a plant, while pseudoephedrine is an isomer of ephedrine with sympathomimetic activity. I can't say it right. So um, I guess one is a little stronger than the other. So obviously, yeah. So I think uh, I think you might be. I think the straight ephedra alkaloids might be a little bit stronger. It, they have to be. Yeah. I mean, or, or else you would take uh, one of those twenty-four hour Sudafeds, and the first person to ever accidentally crunch it or break it down, so the whole time release yeah. goes out the window, and you yeah. get two hundred and forty milligrams. Of You're money. right. Ephedrine is a p more potent CNS stimulator. Yeah, you would be flying. Yeah, because and then you used to buy it uh, as an herbal supplement. Ma Huang was the name of it. Ma Huang. Ma Huang. Check out Ma Huang. <laughs> yeah. Uh, M a h u a n g. Now, is it used in uh, other uh, like Chinese medicine? It's been used for a long time. The Ma Wong thing, but yeah. not what ephedra, or is it the same thing? Oh yeah, same thing. So that's what's in there. So it's got ephedra alkaloids in there, and um, so what does Chinese medicine use it for? Like what are the bronchodilator, what? asthma, oh, bronchitis? Because mm, if you take duh. it, yeah, dude. Oh yeah. So I was an asthmatic growing up, and as I grew up, I I, I, I grew out of it. Right. So, so does I, Western medicine still use it then for cases like that? Used to. 
used to back in the day. So before we got really good asthma medications like um, albuterol, which is just a miracle drug of Western medicine um, for asthma, at least they used to use, they would use caffeine or ephedra. So my sister's father-in-law, right? So he's, uh, he's, I think he's 70 or whatever. He, as a kid had asthma and back then they didn't have, they hadn't invented albuterol yet. So what he used to do, the doctor would tell his mom, make him a big cup of coffee every morning. So as a kid, he would smash a big ass cup of coffee. Really? Yeah, dude. Because it keeps your lungs open. It's a bronchodilator. It's a stimulant. Uh, and it would prevent him from having uh, so many asthma attacks. But yeah, dude. You ever use, oh, see, none of you guys had asthma growing up, huh? No. But I've used clenbuterol, which is probably one of the scariest, craziest drugs that I've ever yeah, used. Yeah, that one's, that was, that was. Uh, I, it, that, I remember I accidentally took a higher, I read the dosage thing wrong on it one time. And, 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 and I really, I had like maybe double of what the recommended dose was, but boy. I mean, I, it felt like my heart was pounding out of my chest. Yeah, that, they, were giving, they were giving that to cattle to keep them lean and, and, and they built muscle on. It's interesting how it affects cattle. <laughs> oh, I cattle. mean, I, I, it, it, I, I lost body fat so fast. It was crazy. Just make a commercial for Kimbe. Don't do <laughs> yeah, yeah, No, I'm not. Everybody. No. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, it scared the shit out of me. It was definitely yeah. one. I mean, I didn't mess with it after that because it was so scary. I thought I was having a heart attack. Well, so. they banned it because it built up in the meat of the cattle. And then people would eat beef and get clenbuterol poisoning. Oh wow! wow. So they start they banned it uh, in most countries. You can't give cattle. So what, say again, why were they using it for the cows? It, it would it would lean them out and, and bulk them up. It's actually a muscle builder in cows. In humans, it doesn't really work that way. Now that's strange to me because I feel like that'd be counterproductive for a fatty cow that you would want. You want them to build. You just want them to gain weight and, and mass, right? Mm. So they would give it to cows and make. Yeah, but them then work. I would think you would give them testosterone. Then you know, give them. Oh, hormones. they would do all of that shit. Yeah. Give them hormones. Well, I know that. that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You 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 see people do that. I, know, with. I mean, that's how we have you know chickens that look like this now. <laughs> and they, like have they, you ever seen a picture of a chicken? From the 1950s yeah. versus a chicken now. Yeah, it's crazy. They don't look. They were like old. little birds. Yeah, they, like, they they were like little birds before, and now they're they're, they're all like, big ass pecs now. Yeah, they look crazy. No, it's, anyway. it's, Justin, I got an article for you. Okay. So uh, I found this article on ScienceDaily.com, which people always ask me where to get articles. Uh, great place. So this was a study uh, done uh, back in November of 2021. Here's the summary. Government action is needed so driverless vehicles can be insured against malicious hacks, which could have potentially catastrophic consequences, insured. a study says. So these stu this, they basically did a study, and they, these experts went into a study and said, oh, all these self-driving cars and the technology, very possible and, and easily can be hacked. Yeah, no so you, shit. So well, you could be driving that, or you could be in it, it's okay, driving, but, and someone could hack it and crash it. So- why is that different than planes? And what technology do we use to keep that from happening with planes then? Because planes are pretty much all flying themselves. I mean, they're very, they're very little of the, the pilot is flying that It's plane. not the same though, right? I don't think it's-, it's all computerized, so it could be hacked. Yeah, it can, but I think that it's- but it's a sort of a closed system. Yeah, I don't think it's getting like communication from constant, yeah. from the from satellites and from the internet. Um, I think with cars, it's going to be a little bit different. I mean, I, you, and would, you, also you would think a, we would use that same technology then to build that for cars then. Why would we not protect uh, the... I'm sure that the point of the article basically is like, we, this is, we need to really focus on this because this could be a big issue. Yeah. You could, you could have a bunch of self-driving cars get hacked by one person, cause mayhem. That's it. The, the issue is, is if you don't have control, somebody can like remotely just have access to your car, just like your computer... You know, I don't know if anybody's seen that happen before, but like somebody just takes over your computer all of a sudden yeah. and like, you know, so it's it's just a logical step to then think is somebody that um, may have access and control of your car could like just drive it into a tree. There's, there's no way that they're not going to give the power and control to like police forces when that time comes. When we get to a point where everybody's driving. Oh, yeah, they want to pull you over. Did you imagine that? And they're going to exactly. make a good case for it. It'll keep from high speed runaways that kill X amount of people per year and percentage. Yeah. It'll completely eliminate that. And they will find a way to campaign and pitch that on us as a good idea. And then now you'll have. Hey, how, how crazy huh, would that be? You're, dri you're driving and all of a sudden your yeah. lights turn on and it's like you're being pulled over and your car slowed That's, down. Uh, That's always a double edged sword. That was to... uh, uh, Stallone and. Um, uh, Judge Dredd? Yeah, yeah. No, is it Judge? Yeah, was it Judge Dredd? 
Yeah. Is that the he, when he's a he's a cop in the future that's with, be what, Judge with, yeah. with Wesley Snipes? Oh no, Demolition Man. Demolition Man. Oh, that's, oh, that's where right. it happens. It happens in Demolition Man yeah, like that. Like literally, Man. like you're being pulled over. Yeah, that would be cra crazy. I did very well could happen. You, you know, know what's funny I, in 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 Demolition Man, I believe there was the two story uh, Taco Bell too. There was. It there was, wasn't there. It was a gore. It was like a, it was like a fancy food restaurant. Yes. In, the, in the future, How? they couldn't say any bad. You know what was cool in that movie that I thought was kind of brilliant? His hair. No, when he. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No, not his hair. It's the first thing I thought of. Yeah. Remember when he crashed and the car filled up with foam? Yeah, yeah. Like hella fast. Yeah. And then he like got out and he was pretty yeah. perfect. He's like, I feel like a cannoli or whatever. But yeah. I thought that was kind of cool. Well, I mean, it's kind of similar to what we have with airbags now. Yeah. I mean, the, the, most cars now have airbags in like side, front, back. Have you everything. seen that they have airbag jackets that they're experimenting with for motorcycles? Have you seen these? No. Oh, no way. So you're riding your motorcycle, you crash, it inflates. Turn into a balloon? Fucking A, dude. <laughs> Shut up. I want to see you this. Just bounce down. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm scared of. You just bounce down the hill. Yeah, exactly. Off the please, please pull this up. I want to see this. No, it was like a big airbag um, like jacket or whatever that inflates and then you're, you're okay. I mean, I thought that was kind of cool. It's really cool. Matt, you do it just like you would like a, a like wa wave runners or treadmills oh, where you have yeah. the, you attach the key. And if you get, what if you forget, you get off. Yeah. Hey, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that would happen. You know, it's, it's probably to try to figure that out. You know? I'm surprised. Yeah. They haven't been cracking down on like motorcycles just in terms of like, if we're going into the future where everybody's like, we're trying to get into automated cars. You Keep know, everybody that, safe. Yeah. That's like a total wild card. No, you know why, dude? All right. Here, I've told my son. They and can't. I had, not with gas prices. Yeah, no. You know, they got to let you. Yeah. I, I, I talked. So, oh, there it is. There's, there's one of them right there so just that's not really that exciting it just yeah it's it just, just a little, a little bit, bit puffy that's all you got for stuff you got something cooler than that is, oh well there you go that one gets a little bigger bit. okay that's kind of cool. i'm disappointing you guys on my searches <laughs> yeah today. you're just so sorry just slipping this week doug <laughs> I don't know what's going on, on with you man yeah. i um i had this conversation with my son we were driving and um we were talking about car speed and this and that so you know a lot of cars have a speed limiter it prevents mm -hmm. the car from pat going Governor. past a certain speed and he goes why wouldn't they just put a speed limit on cars that doesn't let you go over the speed limit, like the top speed limit, which is like 65 miles an hour? Because they want mostly. the ticket, son. I told him, like, dude, uh -huh. if they really There's wanted business around it, if they really wanted us to not speed or whatever, that car manufacturer would be 100. percent You just wouldn't be able to go faster than yeah. a certain speed. Yeah, no, it's bullshit. So motorcycles yeah, come maintain on. the illusion of freedom. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude, I'm doing awesome right now. <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Oh, hey, speaking of tech, new tech, Adam, you were you're you were talking about the new product from Chili. Oh, yeah. So I saw, um, I didn't realize that our, our uh, buddy Kelly Starrett was actually uh, sponsored or working with Chili. And he popped up. He They actually used him for like a paid ad. And so obviously, because I'm connected to Chili, I get hit with those things. And he pops up and I'm like, and he was promoting a, a new model, like called the Doc Pro or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how did I not know about this? And looked it up and it's supposed to like, cool like two times faster you can like you can have it like freezing cold and run it to hot like right away and it gets heated up really quick i forget what it was so it just works it, really fast it yeah, doesn't like a, have all the tubes like the one no no, no it's still, it still has i think those? it does I'm, I, what i saw it looks like it just looks like a different motor unit right so what we have like your Uller. i don't know if you guys have the Ullers or chilies yeah, i have the, the Uller, right and uh you know it's about this big it's, it looks like it's a little bit bigger but l like flatter maybe which i, I, I like because it'll fit under my bed better then uh -huh. um but it, the, it's like a supercharged you know so basically it's like so getting, cool the bed boom yeah wake because that is quieter too yeah. oh and quieter so what am i not but i don't mind the noise it's white noise so i yeah. kind of like yeah. the noise so i mean but i like on the Uller, you have the option to there's like three levels of noise. You can go like the the medium, high, or low, or whatever. Right. So I like it. I like the the white noise. Yeah, white noise actually is uh, good for sleep. Yeah, so I, it, it, that doesn't bother me. So it being, but some people I know don't like any sound. Katrina doesn't like very much sound, so I'm sure uh, that's better. But no, it looks uh, it looks really cool. What does it say on there, Doug? I guess it cools faster. It says it cools twice as fast. Uh, it's quieter. Well, and why I like that because th the first challenge I had when we first started working with them and I was testing out, at first I was like, oh man, this thing doesn't work as well as I thought it would work. But the problem was I was getting into bed and then turning it on. Oh, and then your 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 body heat makes My it body heat was, it was so it's constantly working. So I imagine this might still work then because the it's it's so the, it's so powerful that it might, that was one of the knocks I had on the original model was, 
I would, I had, and once I've, you know, set a timer, you just set a timer for two hours before you get in bed. So you get in, it's already and there. Then it's set at the perfect temperature that you want versus get in, if, especially if you're somebody who runs hot and then you're trying to get it as cold as possible. If it, it felt like it was working all night to try I to get there. I think that, honestly, mm. I would, I'm, this is not an exaggeration. I think that they're, they're the dual one that they have, the Uller, where one is, can be hot, one is cold. I think it's probably prevented divorces. Uh, countless divorces. Yeah, I agree. I mean, because. <laughs> One of the biggest arguments you'll ever have, look, if you're watching this and you're a guy or girl and you, you, you know, you've never been married and you're going to get married, I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to argue over the temperature of your bedroom <laughs> when you go to sleep. Because inevitably, one of you wants it colder, one of you wants it hotter. Or you may be doing activities, gets you all hot. Or whatever. I feel like yeah. that if it was a, cool a family feud title yeah. where you're like, the top five things that couples argue over, yeah. Yeah. thermostat has to be... Number one, what, what is higher finances? Than, yeah, fi okay, money money can be up there yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think thermostat. If I had to take a if I had to take a vote, I would say that would be yeah, thermostat. Thermostat top. for sure. Yeah. And then you know, uh, you know, uh, but typically with finances, you, you someone in the re relationship is more fiscally responsible, and they tend to lead. If you know, and yeah. that's. But with temperature, it's like if you like it hot, I like it cold. Like there's there's See, no me and my wife couldn't be more opposite. We go to bed. She wears a robe, un and then she's under the covers, yeah. and she's like, she's like this, that's Katrina. And I'm in my freaking speedo. I throw speedo. two blankets over under her. I'm like, cool. get this off. Oh, yeah. I'm like out, dude. Legs out. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm so hot. So it, we couldn't be more different. So it's a it's a it's definitely a game changer. Yeah, I agree. Hey, uh, one of the favorite places or companies I work with is uh, Live On Labs. So they make nutrient products like uh, liposomal glutathione, Vitamin C, their B complex, acetyl L carnitine, great products, but a delivery system that was designed by pharmaceutical companies to make sure you get what is in the packet. So, a lot of multivitamins and, and supplement companies that you take the product, your gut destroys it, you pee it out. It's like a waste of time. With uh, Live On, they have a patented, or I should say, a proprietary delivery system, one that works with their products, makes them absorbable. Um, and it's quite rare, it's hard to find liposomal technology, uh, but Live On Labs has it. So right now, here's a promotion they got going on. So check this out. They will give you free liposomal glutathione uh, when you bundle the B-complex with their vitamin C. So you get the B-complex, vitamin C, they'll throw in the liposomal glutathione. By the way, it's one of my favorite products. I use it pre-workout for better pumps. I use it for uh, my immune system and for overall health. It's something that I use on a regular basis now. So go check this company out. Go to mindpumppartners.com. Click on Live On Labs um, and get that hookup. Here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Keith from South Carolina. Keith, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, I uh, just wanted to, um, I'm going to go ahead and get to it real quick. I just, but first of all, thank you for everything that y'all have done. Um, just, it, it's so much information to digest. Um, uh, so I'll kind of get right into it here. Um, I, I'll be 52 at the end of this month. Um, about three or four years ago, um, I was diagnosed with low testosterone, like many males my age, um, and I started taking testosterone injections. Um, uh, won't go into the amounts and all that stuff. I'm, I'm, that's not really why I'm calling. So, uh, but I'm getting in the seven to nine hundred, depending on the day. Um, doing two injections, doing a half of half of an ostracol pill. Uh, 24 to 48 hours afterwards. And so my question uh, really boils down to, um, do I work out as if I'm performance enhanced or do I not work out as if I'm performance <laughs> oh, enhanced? That good, what good a question. good question. That's a very good question. This is a huge mistake people make when they go on testosterone replacement therapy. So I, I want to be very clear. There's a very big difference between the amount of testosterone you take to as therapy and the amount of testosterone or androgens, uh, let's say a bodybuilder would take for performance enhancement. Okay, just to give you an idea, uh, you know, for the person listening, you know, a man may take 100 to 150, 200 milligrams a week at the high end of testosterone for replacement. A bodybuilder would take uh, 10 times that amount on top of other stuff. So there's a big difference. Do not train differently. That's a huge mistake. So now that you're on replacement therapy, one of the biggest mistakes people often make is they go crazy with the volume and the training, it up. trying to maximize their new testosterone levels. Don't do that. Train as you have been, and what will just end up happening is your old training is going to become much more effective. And then listen to your body. If your body becomes more fit 
and you find yourself able to train a little bit more, a little bit harder, and everything feels good. You're not stiff. You're not achy. You're not losing strength or mobility. Perfectly fine. But huge mistake. And I'm gonna here's here's something that's funny too, Keith. I've worked in gyms for a long time, so I've known a lot of bodybuilders and people who've taken those high doses of steroids. They make the same mistake. Like they'll go on the cycle of high doses of anabolics, ramp up their volume, and get no results and can't figure it out. So it's it's not magic even at those crazy doses or so. they would just get or they get results just they could have got way more had they you know yep. scaled back and and scaled the volume accordingly keith are you following any maps programs yet what do you what are you currently doing i'm, I'm not following anything so just to just to give you a, a quick you know my life history in 30 seconds or even less because it's the radio here or because it's podcast here um i i'm i started lifting weights in the 14 15 year old mark and um, the, the majority of my life has been an attempt to be as big and as strong as I can. Um, and I, I've never been able to break the 300 pound mark. Um, oh, you're you know, a big boy. Time, yeah. And my, and my, and my waist was 34 inches at the time. And don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not saying that happened two years ago. You know, that was in my late teens, early twenties. And um, so, so now it's uh, now it's a point of, you know, I've, I've been this big guy all of my life, but I've always, I've always hit the weights heavy. Well, um, there's this thing that's called advanced AGE that I have. And at 52, my body is wore out, you know, so, um, uh, it's just one of those things. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm getting older and I can't, uh, lift the way that I used to lift. So, you know, with the with the testosterone thing, that's that's kind of where my question fell in. Because when we start talking about when I hear you guys talk about um, lifting weights and getting the same results as you did when you were a beginner, now maybe it's hey, maybe I need to go back through that. And um, <laughs> my numbers are the same as when I was a beginner, so why wouldn't I get the same results? Um, but man, I was lifting daily. I mean, it, there wasn't a day where I didn't, plus playing ball and that kind of thing. Keith, um, Keith, listen, me going, me lifting the weights that I could lift when I was in my mid twenties. I was never three hundred pounds with a thirty four inch waist, so I don't know if that's a fair comparison. Yeah, you, you did you play college football or or, or sports? I, I, no, I was I was I wasn't too stupid to play or to be in college. I was just too too, too stupid to go to college. <laughs> um, I, yeah, yeah, if that makes sense. Um, but, but, I, 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 I chose the military route, which don't get me wrong, man. I'm not you know second guessing my my decisions, but it, it just it, it led me down a different path, and and I'm very pleased with where I am now. Um, I, I'm as far as I am had I gone to college. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, I just never got to. I did play semi pro ball, which you know allowed me to allow me to you know bang around a little bit, but nothing to nothing to to brag well, to anybody. The reason yeah, why a bunch of has been never was. Well, the, the reason <laughs> the reason why I bring Uncle that up, Rico. I love it. The reason why I bring it up is because uh, the 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 stronger and the higher performance you had in your twenties, the harder it's going to be to achieve that uh, later on. So my performance oh, my performance was okay, right? Compared to like. Okay, I, sure. I was never a 300 pound, you know, 34 inch waist kind of guy. That that's that's massive. So I, I wouldn't worry too much about that. But can we send you a program? Because I think Maps Performance would really. Oh, I'm glad do you. you a lot I was good. just going to ask you guys where you would went because typically we'd go anabolic. But I think where he's at in his life, I think I would go performance first, then anabolic, and then like and a, then maybe like something else like yeah. strong or something like that. But yeah. I think Maps Performance, Keith, I think you're going to love the way that makes your body feel, especially the mobility sessions. I think you can get a lot of value out of that. Yes, sir. I will go down any route you tell me to go down, and that's that's just the way it is. Oh, beautiful. All right, Keith, we'll send that over to you, okay? Easy enough. I, again, I can't uh, I can't help you out, or I can't uh, thank you enough for helping me out. Can, can I, I put two questions down? Is it okay to lead into the next question without yeah. a lot of feedback? Yeah, that's fine. Tell, tell me how I drop my fat percentage. Yeah. Is that just is that just part of the testosterone? Yeah, you got it. I mean, it, it, no, there's obviously it's more complex than this, but ultimately you're just going to have to watch your 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 nutrition. You got to eat less. So I would keep the protein sure. high, cut your calories. You got to eat less calories for that to happen. Otherwise, you'll you'll build the muscle and that'll help, right? Cuz you'll speed up your metabolism. But without sure. the focus on nutrition, it's going to be really tough. And I, you know, I'm, depending on where you're at, <clears throat> I I actually wouldn't suggest to cut calories yet. I would literally, uh, and we just got off another call. We talked yeah. about this. I would have you focus on, make sure you hit your protein intake, right? 
So make sure you're okay. hit, you you hit what your body needs consistently and really just focus on that. Feed the body when it's hungry. So if you if you have your body's natural signals telling you you need to eat or you want to eat, uh, just make good decisions. I think you will naturally lean out being put on a, pr a program like performance while also hitting your protein intake. I think you uh, without having to cut or restrict really hard, I, I would recommend you first just follow it like that. Yeah, just give it some sure. time and see what happens. I think like the new stimulus sure. alone will totally – uh, your body's going to respond yeah. to it. And it says in your question, you, you're, you weigh 265 at 25% body fat. That's ballpark. Yes. It's a, uh, actually 264, but yes, okay. that's correct. I, I would go, I would aim for 200 grams of protein a day. So just try and eat 200 grams of protein a day and prioritize that. Um, and, uh, and then I, I, I agree. I think that we'd be smart to kind of see what happens. Easy enough. Gentlemen, thank you. I, I, I wish I had, or I wish you had two hours to talk to him. <laughs> well, but, follow up with us, yeah. Keith. Follow up with What's us. That? Follow up with us. Yeah, let's. Oh, thank you. I, I do appreciate that. I, That's, um, yes. you know, the, the feedback is always a is always a good thing. Yes, um, thank you. Make sure that I'm on the right track, but but even more so, make sure you're on the right track. Yeah. And I know you guys are. You know, you're doing what you're doing. Appreciate it. Thank you, Keith. Thanks, thank Keith. you very much. I really. Yeah, Doug, you cut him off there, didn't you? Uh, <laughs> accidentally. He's a talker. <laughs> He's like, I got a present for you, and it gets cut uh, yeah, off. Yeah, right, way to go, Doug. No, you know what? Um, uh, that's a really common thing. Like, Great I, question. Bro, yeah. I there were guys that I worked with that were natural, and then they got on their you know first cycle of anabolics, and they immediately doubled their training volume, did all stuff. And then they were like, why is it not working? My, I don't really see great results or whatever. And I remember them figuring it out and going, oh, yeah. I can't just like – all of a sudden train like crazy. It's not going to work that way. And it's even more important. That's even more true for just testosterone replacement therapy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, yes, you do what you've been doing. Then everything will work out better. You don't need to go crazy with it. Yeah. I like your guys advice with performance. I also, I mean, personally was thinking anything hypertrophy, uh, more of a focus. I know I've, I've met a few of these, uh, type of characters that used to lift like just heavy, heavy weights yeah. all the time. We're big guys. And just in terms of like, you know, feeling uh, better with your joints and av avoiding pain and so like a, a future of, of training, I think uh, shifting it more to the hypertrophy yeah, realm would help a lot. Yeah. Either body, bodybuilding esque type of workout. So aesthetic split type with of some mobility thrown with, with, with performance with going kind of top going back and forth between yep, right. uh, those programs. But yeah, really good question. And I, and I agree, Sal, like it's a really, con I, you even see it with a uh, bodybuilding community. I yep. mean, it was one of the things I think I remember telling you guys off air a lot was, man, I was, I was actually really fascinated by how, how poor of programming that a lot is. Now it's an overgeneralization. There's plenty of guys that are bodybuilding that are brilliant and doing great. But there's a, 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 a larger portion of them that because they're on anabolics, they get away with a lot of bad programming, like subpar guys. Awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, when you are on on testosterone, it is it is much easier to see results, but it doesn't mean a lot of the same rules don't apply to you as far as programming and nutrition. Yep. And, and even if you are getting results, you'd get better results if you learn to listen to your body totally. and, and scaled appropriately. Our next caller is Sean from California. Sean, what's happening? How can we help you? How's it going? Thanks so much for having me. And it's great to meet you guys. Um, so I have two questions. My first question is training focused. And then second is uh, more diet focused, but I'll give a little bit of background first. Um, I'm 25, have been training for the past five years consistently, doing a bodybuilding split. So push pull legs, um, changed up the rep scheme but been pretty consistent with that type of training. And then after COVID lockdown, I switched to anabolic to try and get some novelty. Um, I'd have been seeing some results, but I'm just starting phase two. So I think it's a little too early to tell. Um, my first question is if I'm looking to gain as much size and muscle as possible, is that program the right way to go? Or is there a better option for me? Um, I'm pretty consistent no problem getting in the gym five days. So I don't really miss workouts. Um, and then if anabolic is the right way to go, is it too much to throw in some focus sessions on those trigger days, like to hit shoulders, biceps, triceps, something like that? Oh yeah. So you're trying to mix the focus sessions from aesthetic with the foundational workouts of anabolic. Um, I haven't been doing that, but I was curious <laughs> if anabolic you thought was the right program for the goals, if that would be a good option. Yeah, no, I love it. So what I would do is I would go MAPS Anabolic, three foundational workouts a week, because the program gives you the option to do two or three. So you could do three. 
And then two days a week, instead of trigger sessions, do focus sessions. And essentially what you do is you go to the gym, pick a body part you want to work on, do isolation movements for it, just get a pump and just do like five sets for it. And that's it. So you're in the, in and out of the gym 20 minutes or so um, on those focus session days. That's a great combination. I think that's a perfect program. That being said, I do think there's some value in, you know, even though you're an advanced lifter, you've been training for five years consistently, you like going to the gym five days a week. I still would would want, if you were a client of mine, I would love for you to just follow anabolic to a T at least the first time around. And then we could t- <coughs> we could tweak on round two with doing things like that. It's not that you can't do what we're saying right now. I just think so many times uh, people that are training, especially guys that like to work out and lift, they they tend to overdo what they need to do. There's, there's definitely a difference between what your body can handle, Sal says this all the time, and then what is optimal. And uh, many times what happens with someone just like you, I convince them to just go three days a week of the full body routine and maybe have triggers around that and their body explodes with, totally. with less work in the gym. Yeah. And so I, I sure. always gravitate towards uh, what we want to do, not what we need to do. Yeah. And that's just like human nature in general. And so <laughs> yeah, I'd, I, I would say like give the trigger sessions a go for a bit, but yeah, I mean that the beauty of our programs is that we do have that modification available. So you you're able to kind of interchange and switch things out like that. And we encourage that. It's just really, it's the first time going through uh, as it's literally written out because that's, you know, part of the, the formula. Cool. Yeah, that all makes sense. Um, and then my second question is about um, protein during a cut. So I'm um, about 6'4", 230. So my protein goal is uh, around 220 grams of protein per day. Mm-hmm. Would you say there's anything wrong with using whey or protein, whey or casein protein powder to get 100 to 120 grams of that protein as long as it's not messing with digestion? Um, no, not necessarily, but that's a lot of protein to be getting from protein powder. And I don't have anything to support this, but I... Man, when I was competing, I messed with this a lot. And I told, I remember telling the guys this like, you know, I know there's no real good research to support this because most everything when it comes to meal replacement stuff is basically for weight loss or weight gain, very specific versus body composition or how I looked. When I got all of my protein from whole natural foods versus supplementing a lot with bars and shakes. And I went from, I did both extremes. I was really strict and did nothing but whole foods for a show. And then I did another show or prep for uh, where I allowed like literally two, three bars and two shakes almost every day to hit the protein intake. And absolutely, I was able to lean out and, 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 and build muscle and do all the things. So I definitely was, you can do it for sure. But I swear to God, I just I didn't look and feel as good as I did off of yeah. the whole food. So yeah. it's I've uh, so to me, it's like, yes, you totally can. <clears throat> but in the back of your, your mind, always have that goal of like, okay, if I have an option, you know, to go make myself or make a meal or buy a meal that is whole foods versus just have another shaker bar, I always would would push and encourage you to do that. Even though, yes, you can still get jacked uh, by eating all of your protein from shakes and bars. Cool. And then just the second part of that question is I'm currently on a cut. And so I've been not fully intermittent fasting, but I'll have a protein shake with some coffee in the morning and then I'll eat starting at noon, uh, normally balanced meals the rest of the day is doing something like that going to mess with my metabolism and slow it down or mess with hormones. No, no, that's fine. It's a a great strategy. Yeah. There's there's nothing like that. that. Yeah. No, it's great. All right. Well, thank you so much. That's, that's all I had. All right, awesome. man. Thanks for calling in. Cool. You got all right. it. Thanks, guys. Yeah, there's um, there's a lot we don't know about food. That's I mean, we right. learn stuff all the time about new, you know, phytonutrients and micronutrients and the way things work together. And oh, look, the bacteria inter- interacts with this in your right. mouth, and it causes this to happen in your gut. And there's so many things we don't know that um, it's arrogant for us to have uh, protein powders and bars and supplements and say this is the same thing as food. It's not the same. Now, it contains food, right? Whey protein comes from milk, but is it the same thing? No, I, I think there's. it's obviously not the same thing. One is a powder that has a long shelf life. The other one is comes straight out of a cow. So um, I agree with you, Adam. Now, again, is it going to make a big difference for someone who just wants to be generally lean and fit right. and whatever? Probably not. Although I could make the behavioral argument, right, that you're depending on you know, processed shakes and, and bars and stuff. 
from a physique standpoint, I think the more fit you get, the leaner you get, the more of a difference it makes. And I did the same thing. I tested it myself and mm -hmm. I always look and feel better whole foods based than when I throw in a lot of shakes and stuff. And I, and I just, I really, and by the way, we're sponsored well, by supplement companies. So, <laughs> yeah, so we're not, just being yeah, it's, not, it's not advantageous for us to promote that no, message. No, no. So that's just the truth, <laughs> but it is the truth. And it, it, um, you know, and I, I, I can't, uh, point to research that really supports my argument. And I know I'm, I'm purely going off of my experience, but you know, I, I've tested that several times, and it's very clear to me that I look and feel a little different when I go all whole foods versus when I use the shakes and bars. Yep. And and there's other things too that I like. So when you're doing a lot of the process stuff, there's a lot of artificial sweeteners and stuff that are in there. I, I notice I have more cravings yeah. when I'm doing the bar. Like yeah, I always remember. I remember like the same calories don't make you feel the yeah, same in terms of exactly exactly. Yep. exactly. Yep. So it, so if I'm in a That's cut. Huge. Uh, eating the whole foods really helps me stay satiated where, man, when I'm in a cut and I'm doing bars and shakes, I find myself like, oh, I'll get another bar and then eating three bars in a day. And it's because of, I like it kicks the appetite up. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's so there's other reasons why I, I think that. And I, so I and I think the, the move is to not shame or demonize somebody who's utilizing shakes and bars that frequently, but to just encourage them that, hey. You know, if and when you can always try and get whole foods first. And then that's yep. a great option if you can't but the the goal should always I be. found it more valuable and bulking to use shakes and bars because of the appetite thing thing yes. cutting yeah. uh -huh. cutting with bars and shakes is really hard mm -hmm. uh, it, it's so much better with whole foods yep. our next caller is Amy from Texas hi Amy how can we help you hi y'all um I just want to thank you first off before I get into my question um y'all have helped me so much just from like binging y'all's YouTube and listening to your podcast and y'all are of really great value to the fitness community. So thank you so much for thank helping you. me thank you. and everybody else. <laughs> All right. Mostly Justin and I, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. I just want to so. get, Gosh, make that clear. <laughs> <laughs> Give some credit here. So I'll just read y'all my question. Um, I'm a yoga instructor. I've been practicing for 10 years and I've recently got more serious about my strength training goals. Um, the numbers are pretty arbitrary, um, but I've progressed a lot in the past six months. Um, I really want to get a hundred pound military press. I'm at 85 pounds wow. right now wow, and good. I can rep that out five. Sorry. I'm at the gym. I just got done working out. I'm a little out of breath, but, um, I can rep that out for five reps, um, five sets. And then I really want to get 230 pounds for a really deep squat um, when I really started evaluating my goals six months ago, um, I was squatting right up parallel or a little bit above at like 185 and all the weight was loaded into my quads, obviously. Um, and then I had a girl at the gym who was like, hey, to get like more glute activation, you want to get really low. So I regressed my weight and I started at 95 pounds. And since then, I've been able to get to 165 in a little under six months. Um, yeah. I practice yoga two times a week in addition to lifting five days a week. And I always do like one solid mobility day, um, with kettlebells. Um, I teach upwards of 10 classes a week. I personally train on the side. I've been doing that for a year and I'm studying to be a registered dietitian. So I walk a lot on campus and I'm wondering like what's causing my plateaus in my military press and my squat. Um, my other lifts, like deadlifts, RDL, um, bench press, and good mornings are all really solid. And I'm focusing on these specific lifts because they give me a lot of challenge. Okay. Amy, how old are you? Yeah. I'm 29. Okay. Yeah. So I love how strength focused you are as a yogi practitioner. That's, that's a, awesome. a yoga in combination with strength training. <laughs> like, and you're, you're, you're a an, dynamic duo. You're right an instructor, there. so you know how to do it right. Yoga yeah. with strength training is such a great combination. It's an amazing combination. Okay, so um, you want to get strong real fast? Um, not like I, I'm patient, but I'm very like goal oriented. So me setting these goals for myself, I know that it might be a battle of my mind as well. To mm -hmm. where I'm like, okay, now I have like numbers in my head, and I just want to get there. But I'm also, you know interested in just like yeah. the journey and I'm wondering like what's hindering my progress. Yeah. Yeah. I got you. No, I mean, let me rephrase the question. Do you want to get stronger okay. and do you want to feel the strength? Do you want to start to see those results happen? I think the, yes. the answer is yes. Okay. You're doing too much resistance training. So you're, you're doing two yoga classes a week. You're teaching a lot, which you're not doing the full class, but you're still moving. You're doing a lot of walking. 
There's a stress of studying and uh, for what you're studying for. Five days a week of strength training on top of the yoga is a lot. I would say do three full body workouts a week. Yeah, literally. anabolic. Mm -hmm. go, maps anabolic. Go, yeah, MAPS anabolic uh, would be perfect. Do the three foundational workouts a week option on there because there's a two versus a three one. Three foundational workouts a week plus the two yoga, and you'll see strength gains come on, especially phase one. You'll see them come on real fast. Especially if, if you stay consistent with the trigger sessions too. Yeah, it, you'll see them come on real fast. Amy. You're just doing a lot. You're doing a lot uh, of, of exercise, training, and activity. It's probably why you're plateauing. So. And, and, and also, okay, uh, have a little empathy for yourself too. Like you're kind of kicking ass already. So what you've, what you've, uh, the fact that you've increased the depth, you started at 90 something pounds, you had 130 something pounds on your squat. Your overhead eight, pressing 85. Yeah. Or, overhead pressing almost a hundred pounds yeah, already. Crushing. I mean, you're, you are strong. <laughs> and then you also practice yoga. So I'm assuming that you have pretty good mobility too. So uh, I, I think you're doing pretty damn good, yeah. but I get it. I get the being very goal oriented and want to stay focused on something like that. I agree with Sal. I think that maybe all you have to do is actually kind of uh, scale back a little bit uh, on the volume and focus on like a full body routine. And I think your body's going to respond. Yeah, I bet you in phase three weeks of phase one of maps anabolic, you'll see a 15 pound, Mm -hmm. bump to your squat alone if if not more and your overhead press too so um if you don't have that we'll send that to you okay? the overhead also that well, keep in mind i agree with you but keep the overhead press will be slow right that's, that's a slower one than the squat yeah. for sure. yeah. well also to the you know just if you can uh maybe during your trigger session days or like you know keep it fairly light but like overhead carries and you know adding a rotational um, type of exercises in there to reinforce those, you know, that shoulder is really going to aid into your performance as well, just to keep that in mind. Okay. Amy, do you um, have MAPS Anabolic? Because we'll, we'll send that to you if you don't. Um, I don't. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I want you in our forum too. I want to I want to follow along because I'm excited to hear about how fast you progress. Considering where you're at and what you're doing, I mean, if you were my client, I'd be so confident that I'd get you strong really fast just by taking you from five days to three days full body. Um, I, so I want to see, I want to see what happens. We'll, we'll let you in our forum for free and then give us some updates. Okay. Okay. So it just, I mean, it gives me kind of anxiety to not train that often just because, like, <laughs> just because like the gym, <laughs> the gym is like my flow so and happy state. On the head. Amy, you can go to the gym every day. Yes. Go. You just, just don't go walk and do yoga, do yoga, <laughs> do mobility. Yeah. You could do, you know, uh, you could do priming sessions, knitting, you can <laughs> no. You can do stuff. You can go to the gym every single day. Just don't lift weights uh, yes. every single day. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But you can okay. go to the gym and do all do other stuff if you want. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, if okay. they have a sauna, steam room, utilize that. I mean, have fun. There's nothing. I look. I get the mental part. Trust me. I work out daily for the mental part. So I get that. But you're gonna get stronger with Maps Anabolic in in. in faster than you have well, you before. said you do some mobility with with kettlebells right i mean yeah. there's a lot you can do to kind of reinforce stability and structure there with like a bottoms up light press you can do like a turkish get-ups you can do windmills uh, all that stuff is going to uh, contribute into your overall strength so just keep it moderate to to low intensity that's that's the key. amy do you have any of our programs yet um, I don't. I actually just, this is random. I just finished um, Paul Check's scientific stretching. So I had oh, done yeah. a few, hey, okay. I had done a few of his like continuing education. And so I just found y'all six months ago and I've been binging your free resources on YouTube and then like your podcast. And so I was like, okay, I'll invest in mind pump as my next block of continuing education. Yeah. yeah. Um, Paul, Paul Check's yeah. got great, great courses, great stuff. So I'm sure what you're hearing yeah. from us is kind of what you learned uh, through his courses as well. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, awesome. Amy, good luck. Uh, but Thank you all so much. Yeah, we'll see you inside the forum, huh? For sure. All right. All right, cool. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Yeah, that's a, that's a, it's always hard, right? You get, I mean, by the way, 90% of people are not, don't have this problem. 90% of people, you got to like kick them in the ass to get them to work no, out. No, it's the trainers. Yeah. It's trainers and athletes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. People that, yeah, no, 100%. And, and boy, was she a dead giveaway too. When, when she said that, I, <laughs> and I knew it too. I knew it. So yeah, I you said just, three you days just confirmed that we, totally. we definitely I mean, need to do that. So 100%. But <laughs> hit around the head. But I tell you, dude, she's going to go. I've had clients like this. Exactly. Literally yoga instructors who do the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna, no, I'm going to train you twice a week. That's all you're going to do. What? Trust me. And then their strength just goes. Through so the was her? So when she says five days a week, was that? Uh, and then also yep. the yoga yeah. and yep. then, top of it. And then also the kettlebells, or is the kettlebells yep. included? No. I think she. 
Really? It was all of it. All of it. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, yeah she's cool. overdoing it. She's yeah, in all the walking and all that stuff. Yeah, she's overdoing yeah. it for sure. Our next caller is Rebecca from California. Rebecca, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for taking my question. A uh, little background. A few years ago, I lost about 90 pounds, but I kind of hammered it off of myself. So I was not in a great place metabolically when COVID hit. I am an oncology social worker in a big hospital. So as you can imagine, the last couple of years have been pretty rough mentally and physically. Um, and I just started stacking on body fat at a pretty alarming rate. Um, I realized that I needed some help. So I got into therapy. I hired a nutrition coach and I just started taking better care of myself. Physically, I just wasn't myself and I felt kind of like garbage. So I thought there might be a hormonal component to what was going on. And I actually reached out to three different doctors and none of them would even run the blood work. Wow. Um, so I got really mm. frustrated, um, but I listened to you guys. So I realized this was not going to happen through my insurance. And I reached out to Dr. Rand's team at Regenerative Sports Medicine. I had a consult with them. Amazing experience. I, I almost cried after the meeting because it was just such a relief to have somebody listen um, they said, basically, my blood work looked great. My testosterone wasn't subclinical, but it definitely wasn't optimized. So given my goals and my symptoms, they gave me a prescription for oxandrolone, which is Anabar. Um, and I started that about two and a half weeks ago. A uh, little bit before that, I also started to try and do a cut again. So I'm eating about 1800 calories a day, um, hitting my protein. And then as far as training, uh, I lift weights in a non-crossfit class setting about four days a week. Um, and then I pole dance two to four hours on the weekends. Um, so given all of that, is there anything that you guys would recommend that I shift about my nutrition or my training? You know, potentially I could start to feel a lot better in the next couple of weeks. And I'd really like to make some momentum towards my goals Amicons coming back. I got some small outfits to wear. So <laughs> yeah. super open to anything you guys say. Rebecca, yeah. you're doing everything right. Yeah, I was gonna say I right now I would let's let's see what happens. I feel Dude, like you're you doing got, everything right. You got you went to you you started talking about taking care of yourself. I mean, when you started telling us about your job and what happened, and I you know, I was I was ready to say, look, you need to take care of yourself, you need to work on that part first, but you got there already, you're working with a therapist, you're working with your nutrition. You're doing the workout, you're wor optimizing hormones, which really helps you. It kind of gets you out of that hole, right? Because you're in that hole of low energy. It's hard to get out of it. The oxandrolone is probably going to make you feel better. Works pretty quickly from what I'm uh, from what I'm aware of. So you'll start to feel more energy. You're on the right track. Here's what I'm going to say to you. I'm going to caution you to not overdo things because I think you're going to want to. You're going to want to just scale things up and ramp things up and push it harder and harder because you're probably going to start to feel really good. Be patient let your body work. And uh, if anything, I'd say also focus on rest because what probably got you here, excuse me, what got here was the, the, the stress and maybe not getting enough sleep or stress management. So make sure you take care of yourself in that way as well. But you're doing, you're doing great, Rebecca. I, I, I can't wait to see where you're going to be at in, in, in three to four months. I, I want to you, you in your notes. I saw something about your dietitian having trainers that listen to mind pump. What does that say? Yeah. <laughs> so everyone, everyone on the team, uh, trainers are listening, nutrition coach is listening. So they are all prepared to help me with any recommendations that you guys have. Oh, that's all right. You're on yeah. fire. Listen, you're going to be, if you may, if you maintain and I'm telling you right now, I can what predict program this. are we on right now? Yeah, yeah. Are you following one of our programs, by the way? That's a good question. So I was going to ask you guys about that. Um, I do lift weights in this class setting and I'm not married to the programming per se, but it is my transitional activity, like from between work and home. And so I need the people in my life just for my own sanity. Sure. Um, but the trainers are super flexible. So I had a thought that I could maybe run anabolic and kind of tweak what I'm doing in class to fit that programming. And then anything I can't do in class, I can do either my home gym or the gym on campus. I would separately. love that. Yeah, I, would, I would love that. 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 that might be too much right now. And I'll tell you why. You said the trainers doing the class or listening to the show. And you, you said something that's oh, really dietitians, important. Dietitians. She said the trainers too. Oh, the Everybody. trainers in the, in the gym too? 
<laughs> yeah, everybody. You, and you said something that's really important to me, which is that you really need those people in your life. That's going to be more valuable than perfect workout programming right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send you Maps Prime Pro. I want you to do mobility stuff on your own at home just to reinforce your joints and keep yourself healthy. Stick to what you're doing with your trainers right now. When you're ready to move to more specific workout programming, I think Maps Anabolic would be perfect. But if you if you can identify that the mm. people in your life and the class are very important to you right now, that's going to be more valuable. And I'm going to tell you right now, the thing the the roadblock that's going to get in your way is going to be you trying to overdo things. Throwing you're going to feel good and you're going to want to do more and then you're going to feel better and you're going to want to do yeah. more and that's going to backfire. So be very very calm about this. Take your time. Don't work work with your body. Allow your body to work with you. Don't force it don't try to force it and you'll do you're going to do amazing doing all the stuff that you're doing yeah i'm with you with sticking with that for right now i mean it'd be great if you could pursue something like a personal trainer to work with you individually um and get more on the weight training specific strength training side of things but i think that would be you know sort of the next step after uh you, you know you get to a, a good place with where you're at right now yeah i i agree with both my only concern about the class setting and i and is and coming from a, a coach and teacher who taught class weight training is they tend, even if the programming says for you to rest, everybody, when they're in a group setting has this tendency to keep going and going and they don't give themselves adequate rest between sets. So my advice to you would be if you are going to do the class setting and it's, continue it, doing it, it's strength training, not yeah, cardio is, uh, you know, uh, please, you know, give yourself, you know, 90 seconds of rest between sets and and fight that urge of, you know, everybody else picking their weights up and going right back at it. It's so important that you do that or else all we're really kind of doing is cardio with weight. So that that's my only concern with the the class setting and, and how it can um, it could promote that kind of way of training. But yeah. where I wholeheartedly agree with Sal, and this is a great conversation to have is that this is an example of where even if you were doing CrossFit and the way you explained how important it was to you community wise and it's right from work and it's keeping you consistent like that would trump my you know, my desire as a trainer to move you in a different direction mm -hmm. strength training wise because yeah. consistency trumps that because you're actually going to do it and you're happy and you like it and so that's so important to me as a coach it'd be different if you're just like hey I'll do whatever you say I'm, I'm motivated yeah, to and I don't care yeah and I don't care and you're not attached to that but you, you've already expressed uh, how valuable that is to you already, and that that is important. Even if the programming is subpar in comparison to you following a strict MAPS anabolic program with a private trainer, if you're less likely to be consistent with that, then I don't want you to try and do that. So yeah. if you are going to do the class, that's my, my big recommendation is just fight the urge of not falling into the circuit training type of trap. And then the other thing that I'm going to add to what Sal said, because it is going to happen because you're going to start seeing better and better results and you're going to get motivated. Um, what's the primepro.com? What's the, my webinar? Yeah, primeprowebinar.com. Okay, so if you haven't gone to primeprowebinar.com and and download that that free mobility workout I put for 50 minutes on there, do that and keep that. And every time you have the urge to go do more because you're motivated, you're feeling great, and, you're, and you just want to be more active – you know, turn that on at your house and do that and or go for a nice Well, we're going to send her Prime Pro, so she'll be able to even individualize it. But that class will give her a good idea. Well, it gives her something to follow, exactly. right? Versus you having to kind of like if you're you're going to have a day where you're yeah. just like you got energy, you're motivated, you've already done your routines and you want to do more. Go follow that class. Do that mobility totally. workout I have and or go for a nice walk. There's there's your prescription for the days when you start to like want to do more. For now, I would say do what we're doing. Yeah, I, I do have a tendency to overtrain and undereat, and I've I've hurt myself a couple of times. Um, so I actually do have Prime Pro, and it really helps me rehab uh, a hip injury that I had um, because I was doing too much and and getting a little out of control. So I, I will absolutely keep. Following well, Rebecca, that. I want to give I want to give you something for free because I like you so much. Did you ever anabolic? Are you in our, for Are you in our forum? I, so I'm in the forum. I have anabolic performance <laughs> oh, and aesthetic. All right, name. Um, you have anything you want to give us? Yeah, you, yeah. Na yeah. Name, name something. I'll give it to you right now. Do you want you have any programs you want yeah. of ours? 
strong. I want strong. All right, we'll, oh, send, you, you, we'll send you strong. There you go. All right. There you go. But don't Thank go. You don't do strong on top of your classes. Hold on <laughs> a second. Yeah. Wait a I minute. Mean, Are you I tricking won't. us? Yeah. They'll, they'll watch me. My trainers will watch me. They'll yell at me right, if good. I get out of control. And right. they make me time my rest. I have to time it on oh, my watch. Oh, good. Oh, that makes, I, me, that makes me happy. Get some smart yeah, people Yeah, I can't be trusted on my own. Good, good. Thanks for calling in, Rebecca. We'll send that over, Rebecca. Thank you guys so much. Thanks. Wow, that makes me so happy. She did a lot of the right stuff uh, from where she was at. She's in the right, moving in the right direction. She'll screw herself up if she overdoes it. But if she doesn't, she's going to be, this is going to be such an incredible transformation. No, I she can't. seems pretty self aware, though, going through yeah. this, you know? So I think uh, she'll be able to recognize those, Shit, even the fact signs, that she's got right? coaches timing her because she doesn't even trust herself to do it. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. So she's uh, she's on a great path yeah. right now. It's now little- and the other thing I want to comment on was her experience with, uh, with hormones with her general practitioners. It really annoys the shit out of me because I've had this experience, not, not with hormones, but with other things. We're like, hey, doc, I'd like you to, you know, I want to get this tested and see what's going on. And they dismiss you. Oh, I and know. it's just so damn it's frustrating. So frustrating. Oh, it's so annoying, you know? Yeah. So it's like you don't, you can't, you want to take your health into your own hands, but, you know, they make it harder. So I'm glad she went to uh, mphormones.com, talked to the team over there. Because they're definitely on the forefront with that. I also think it's important to uh, highlight again, just, uh, you know, she's a perfect example, right? Everybody knows that we, we you know, rag on CrossFit all the time and we tease the Orange Theory and the yeah. F45 classes and we kind of bag on that a lot. But here's a perfect example of where I, w- I would be fine and encourage you. Totally. Because I, from what she's telling me, like that, if I got a client who's just like, Adam, I mean, it's it's li- right next to my work. It's perfect timing for me. The, the people guys, are really important yeah, to me. I've, I've, I've met great relationships. I have a friend down there and we have this accountability. I mean, boy, does that, that matters more. I Regardless if I know that it's subpar programming in comparison to you following like a MAPS anabolic program. It doesn't matter at that point. There's other other things that it brings uh, tremendous value to you. Totally. And so that's where I would I would compromise as a coach and say, hey, you know what, let's let's do it. Yep. And then eventually what I would what I think would happen is she would get the momentum. She would start to to build the body and kind of be at the place she wants to yep. be. And then now she's like, now you feel kind of on top of the world. You kind of accomplished yep. a lot. You've, you've you've made huge moves. You've been super consistent. And now you're like, okay, Adam, what could I do more? Okay, hey, well, let's get into some good programming. Exactly. Hyper focus on strength. Exactly. Now. Yeah. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal, and they're all free. You can also find us all on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. 